greetings to everyone today we are going to discuss oxidation type of reaction in that specifically we are discussing dihydroxylations that is prevost dihydroxylation and uh, woodward's modification now come to the discussion of first reaction that is prevost dihydroxylation what does prevost dihydroxylation means so here in this case in the prevost dihydroxylation the reactants are alkenes alkenes in presence of iodine and the silver salts of benzoates or else you can also take silver salts of acetate alkenes in presence of iodine and silver salts of benzoates and acetate gives diesters these diester intermediate upon hydrolysis gives diols the diols which are formed in this case are anti diols so prevost reaction gives anti diols from alkenes so the prevost reaction allows the synthesis of anti diols from alkenes by the addition of iodine followed by nucleophilic displacement with the benzoate here we are taking silver salts of benzoates or acetate so here nucleophilic displacement with the benzoate in the absence of water here we are performing this reaction so after the diester formation we are performing this reaction in the absence of water so under anhydrous conditions we have to perform this reaction so followed by the hydrolysis of whatever the diester which is formed in this case intermediate diester under basic conditions it results in the formation of anti diols this is prevost reaction next coming to the mechanism of this prevost reaction so in the previous classes we already know how the iodination reaction will take place on alkenes the initial addition of iodine on alkenes it leads to cyclic iodonium ion formation so this is the cyclic iodonium ion which is formed this cyclic iodonium ion which is formed in this case it undergoes substitution by benzoate the benzoate here in this case this benzoate undergoes a substitution type of reaction nucleophilic substitution type of reaction here this benzoate comes and attacks onto this carbon and this carbon iodine bond gets cleave and the iodonium ion here in this case iodine with positive charge is removed now here in this case what are the silver salts which are there in the reaction in reaction which gets coordinated with the iodine now here in this case we have an iodine in this case now another benzoate may act like a nucleophile and it can displace this iodine from this carbon and this carbon iodine bond get can be cleave but here in this case due to the neighboring group participation what are the benzoate here in this case we have in this case previously attacked uh, nucleophile this benzoate acts like a neighboring group and it attacks on to this carbon via a neighboring group participation so due to this neighboring group participation the second equivalent of benzoate is not coming and attacking now after this neighboring group participation in this case the carbon iodine bond gets cleaved and iodine gets liberated as silver iodide now you can see in this case the neighboring group participation in this case the oxygen with lone pair of electrons acts like a neighboring group and it attacks onto this carbon and carbon iodine bond gets cleaved and this iodine now gets liberated as silver iodide okay silver iodide liberated now here in this case what we formed in this case here oxygen is with the three bond now this is oxygen with the, uh, three bonds and it gets a positive charge and this positive charge gets delocalized between these two oxygens and this carbon if this bond pair of electrons shifts over here you get a positive charge and if this oxygen shares a pair of electrons in between this carbon and oxygen you get a positive charge on this oxygen so positive charge is delocalized between this oxygen carbon and oxygen now so this whatever the intermediate formed in this case is a cyclic benzoxonium intermediate so this cyclic benzoxonium intermediate which is formed now 
this gets attacked by second equivalent of benzoate now this cyclic benzoxonium intermediate gets opened up now you get a cyclic uh, now you get a diester so here in this case the benzoxonium sorry uh, the benzoate which is attacking it attacks on the opposite side of this carbon oxygen bond opposite side of this cyclic intermediate so whatever the incoming benzoate nucleophile which is there it will be aligned opposite to the previous benzoate now see here in this case that orientation of these two groups are opposite to each other now the hydrolysis of this one okay the hydrolysis of this one will leads to the formation of anti diol okay this is the mechanism of prevost reaction so prevost reaction allows the synthesis of anti diols from alkene synthesis of iodine and silver salts of benzoates or acetates this is all in connection with the prevost reaction now coming to the woodward's dihydroxylation so this woodward's dihydroxylation is named after the american chemist that is robert burns woodward it's also called as a rb woodward okay. so in woodward's dihydroxylation what is the modification which we can see when compared with the prevost dihydroxylation so in prevost dihydroxylation what we have seen in the previous case it allows the synthesis of anti diols now woodward's dihydroxylation is just a modification here in this case in the previous prevost dihydroxylation we have performed under anhydrous conditions for diester formation whereas here in this case we are using moisture or aqueous conditions now so here in woodward's dihydroxylation alkenes gives syn diols the previous prevost dihydroxylation we got anti diols now in woodward's reaction it allows the synthesis of syn diols from alkenes okay these are the alkenes this will give you syn diol here in this case alkene is alkene upon addition of iodine followed by nucleophilic displacement with the uh, silver salts of acetates in presence of water it is taking place okay in presence of water whereas previous prevost dihydroxylation that is anhydrous condition but here in this case the nucleophilic displacement with acetates in presence of water it is taking place now after this what are the ester which is formed in this case okay the mono ester which is formed in this case upon hydrolysis under basic conditions gives you the syn diol okay this is a woodward's dihydroxylation where we are getting syn diols on alkenes now let us see the mechanism of woodward's dihydroxylation in the similar to prevost dihydroxylation the initial addition of iodine leads to the formation of cyclic iodonium ion formation alkenes gives cyclic iodonium ion formation upon iodination now this cyclic iodonium ion which is formed undergoes nucleophilic displacement nucleophilic substitution with acetate ions this acetate ion attacks onto this carbon and here in this case this carbon iodine bond gets cleaved and you get this uh, mono ester now the cyclic acetoxonium ion here in this case this is the cyclic acetoxonium ion form as Uh, the previous which we have discussed in the prevost dihydroxylation here also neighboring group participation will take place in this case now the neighboring group participation leads to the cleavage of carbon iodine bond and then you can see the iodine gets liberated as silver iodide and uh, it leads to the formation of cyclic acetoxonium ion intermediate this cyclic acetoxonium ion intermediate is uh, stabilized by the delocalization and the positive charge gets uh, Uh, uh delocalized on oxygen carbon and oxygen okay of the cyclic acetoxonium ion now in the next see this reaction we are performing in presence of water so what is happening in this case is water acts like a competitive nucleophile and this water acts attacks onto the positive charged carbon of acetoxonium and yeah, acetoxonium ion intermediate so in contrast to the prevost reaction here in this case water acts like a competitive nucleophile and attacks onto the carbon then what are the ortho ester which is formed in the ortho acetate which is formed in this case cyclic ortho acetate this cyclic ortho acetate it undergoes cleavage now the oxygen in this case which gets protonated then what is happening the 
oxygen hydrogen bond gets uh, uh, shifted here bond pair of electrons gets shifted here and you get uh, see here this bond pair of electrons are shifted over here and then you get a carbon uh, oxygen double bond carbon oxygen double bond then this carbon oxygen bond gets cleaved and you get a hydroxy group and this is a mono acylated diol you got it. you get in this case now this mono acylated diol upon hydrolysis you get the syn diol okay so since the oxygen of uh, this uh, cyclic uh, acetate okay cyclic uh, acetoxonium ion intermediate are retained in the um, mono acylated diol then uh, the stereochemistry of the diol is syn diol so the desired diol which we get in this case we get after hydrolysis okay that is the syn diol we are getting in woodward's modification or woodward's dihydroxylation thank you